Hello, it's Miss Beauty here and today we are continuing with our topic of measure and we are still focusing on grams and kilograms because it's still important to know how to read measuring scales and that is all part of learning about weight and this is a follow-on from yesterday's lesson all about measuring and understanding scales in grams. So we are still going to learn to read a measuring scale in grams but I'm also going to introduce to you um, looking at kilograms as well. And you can see from my pictures, we've got lots of different types of mechanical scales. You've got ones that you might stand on to weigh your body. You've got ones like this that you might find in your kitchen and that move around like a dial or like a clock face almost. And obviously this one is one that you might use at an airport or just before you're going on holiday to measure your suitcase as an example in kilograms. So you would hook your suitcase on to the end of this. So these are just some real life examples and that's why it's very important to understand how to measure uh, or understand how to read measuring scales, okay? Now, here is a measuring scale. So weighing scales can be read like a clock. The dial indicator, so our little dial, our hand here, moves as the weight increases. So it always starts off at zero and it moves clockwise like this, depending on the weight as it gets heavier and heavier. OK, and this big line here we know is worth 100 grams and so on. And each small little line is worth 10 grams. OK, now to work out what each of these little lines is equal to, you can use your intuition, which is just using your brain to think about what it might look like and using sort of trial and error. So you could think, right, is my are my increments already going up in tens? Let's just double check that. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So I definitely know, okay, that each little increment or little line in between zero and 100 is worth 10 grams. Because if I did 20, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 100 grams would be here if our increments were worth 20 grams. If I did five grams, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Nope, this would be 50 grams. So we know that each little increment is going up in 10 grams. So that's how you would use trial and error. There's another way you can work it, which each increment is worth. You can ask yourself, how many increments are there between zero and 100 grams? So if I count that, I've already counted it. I know there's 10 here, okay? So there's 10 increments. OK, so all I need to do is 100, because we know that we're looking to get from 0 to 100 grams, 100 divided by 10. So I'm asking myself, how many 10s go into 100? If I divide by 10, I remember I can just knock a 0 off, or I know 10 times 10 is 100. So 100 divided by 10 is equal to 10 grams. So I know that each little increment is worth 10 grams. So when a question asks me, what uh, weight is the dial or the hand pointing to? Well, I know it's going to be within 200, okay? 210, 220, 230, 240, 250, 260, okay? That's how you would work something like that out, okay? 260 grams is where my weighing scale is pointing to. If I get a weighing scale that looks a bit like this, well, first of all, I can use my trial and error. Let's try with 10 this time. So here's our zero grams. Okay, it goes all the way up to, it would end up at one kilogram, but I've cut that part off, okay? So we've got grams, that's what we're working with. And we've got lots of different boxes and we need to work out where these arrows are pointing to on our scale. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, my scale doesn't go up in 10 grams. Does it go up in fives? 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. No, nope, it doesn't go up in fives either. Okay, so I think I'm going to work out how many increments there are between 0 and 100. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so there are five increments. So what I need to do is I need to do my 100 divided by 5. Okay, I ask myself, how many times does 5 go into 100? And I know the answer is 20, so it's 20 grams. So I know that each increment is worth 20 grams and I can just test that out right now. Zero, 20, 40, 60, 80, 
a hundred. So I know that I'm definitely right. And each increment is worth 20 grams. So this arrow, I already know it's pointing directly at a hundred grams. So I can just write that straight into my box. Okay. What about this one here? Well, that's gone a wee bit too far. So I would, if I'm going up in twenties, I would do 720, 40, probably about 760. That one's an estimate, 760 grams, but that's okay. What about this one here? Well, I know it's pointing directly at 300, to 300 grams, so I can write that answer into my box. Excuse my handwriting, it's very difficult to use this little pen. Uh, what about this one here? So I'm following, oh, I know it's between 400 and 500. It can't be any bigger than 500, and my increments are going up in 20. So 400, 420, 440, 460, 400, and... 80 so I know the answer is 480 grams okay so that's how you work out or that's how you read scales and that's how you work out what each increment is worth because you're not always going to get uh, a measurement that is exactly on 100 or 200 300 sometimes it will be in between that's why you need to work out which each of the little lines represent okay now we are going to move on to slightly trickier scales. So that's why it's important to learn the skill that I've been teaching you about working out how many increments there are between zero and 100 to work out the answer, rather than just using your trial and error. You can, it's whatever works best for you. I'm just trying to give you a few different strategies to help you. Okay, so this scale here is asking us how many increments are there between 100 and, sorry, zero and 100. So we've got one, two, three, four. Okay, so I need to do 100 divided by four. And if you think back to our fractions topic, I know that four goes into 100 25 times because 25 of 25 is 50, 25 of 25 is 50 again. And if you add those two together, we get 100. 25% is the same as a quarter or 25 out of 100. Okay, it's dividing by four, so 25 grams. So I know that each of these increments are worth 25. So zero, 25 grams, 50 grams, because 25 at 25 is 50, 50 grams, and then 50 at 25 is 75 grams. And if you think back to our fractions, this is worth a quarter, okay? 50 grams is halfway. And 75 grams is three quarters of the way up our scale. Okay, before we get to 100 grams. Okay, what about this scale here? It's very small, but we can still use that exact same strategy that I've just shown you for this example. How many increments are there between zero and 100? There are one, two increments. So I'm asking myself, right, what's 100 divided by two? How many twos go into 100? What's half of 100? I know that the answer is 50. 50 at 50 is 100. So each increment is worth 50 grams. And that definitely looks right because we know 50 grams is halfway and that's halfway on our scale. OK, so that's how you work out which each little increment is worth. Now, we're also focusing on kilograms today. But again, it's just the exact same strategy, apart from you're just working with bigger bigger measurements or heavier objects because we're using kilograms and we know that they're much bigger than grams. So on this scale, this is another one, we can see that it's being measured in kilograms. Okay, but we're starting off with zero. We're, if we're starting off with zero, we know that from zero to one kilogram, everything in between is going to be grams. Okay, this little section, are they are all worth grams because how many grams are in one kilogram? It is a thousand grams. I'm going to write that here. So one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. Okay. So once you get past a thousand grams, that's when you're working with kilograms. So let's see if I can work out what this scale is going up in. So I can just count um, from zero to get to sort of a thousand grams. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm asking myself, right, what is a thousand divided by 10? And because I'm dividing by 10, I can just knock a zero off. Or how many times does 10 go into a thousand? I know that 10 times 100 is equal to a thousand. 
So each little increment is worth 100 grams. OK, so this is zero, 100 grams, 200 grams, 300 grams and so on until you get to 900 grams, which is here. And then rather than writing 1000 grams, you can just go straight into kilograms. So then this one would be one kilogram and 100 grams, one kilogram and 200 grams, one kilogram and 300 grams and so on. Or you could just write it as one, there's one kilogram, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 1.5, and so on. But it's the same if one, if you write something as 1.5 kilograms, it's the same as saying one kilogram and 500 grams. So I hope that makes sense. I'm going to show you a few more examples. How many increments are there between one kilogram? So we're starting off with one kilogram this time and two kilograms, two kilograms is over here. And let's say I've got a huge bag of flour that I'm going to weigh. So I need to figure out, okay, which each increment is worth. So I can count between this increment here and this one here. I've got one, two, three, four, right? So there are four. So I need to ask myself, right, what is a thousand divided by four, okay? And again, you, because it's quite a tricky sum, you can always set it out like the bus stop method of division. That's what I would do if I wasn't too sure about it in my head. OK, how many fours go into 1000? Well, I know that four doesn't go into one, so I put zero here with my remainder one that goes on top, top here to make 10. How many fours go into 10? Well, I know four doesn't go into 10, but it goes into eight two times with a remainder of two. OK, so I put my two here, carry over to make 20. How many fours go into 20? I know that four times five is 20. OK, and how many fours go into zero? Well, I would just write zero. So I know that a thousand divided by four or four increments is 250. So it's 250 grams. OK, so I know that each of these increments are going up in 250. So this is one kilogram. This is one kilogram and 250 grams. This is one kilogram and 500 grams because 250 and 250 is 500. So one kilogram and 250 grams is here. One kilogram and 500 grams is here. One kilogram and 750 grams is here. And then it goes all the way up to two kilograms because we're adding 250 grams each time. So I hope that makes sense. How many increments are there between one kilogram and two kilogram here? So here's another example. So let's count the increments. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's five. So I know that I need to do a thousand divided by five. Now, the reason we're working with a thousand is because remember there's a thousand grams in one kilogram. Okay, so oops, put a little division sign here. Okay, so 1000 divided by five again you can do your bus stop method of division if you're not too sure about how to use it quickly in your head okay i sometimes struggle with that so that's why i sometimes set it out like the written method right does five go into zero N uh, one nope it goes zero times so i put zero here and i move, put my remainder one here does five go into ten yep five goes into ten two times five goes into zero nope so i just write zero and I'll also just write zero here. So I know that each increment is worth 200, 200 grams, okay? So this is one kilogram, one kilogram and 200 grams, one kilogram and 400 grams, one kilogram and 600 grams, one kilogram and 800 grams, and then two kilogram. So you're adding one kilogram and 200 grams, you're adding 200 grams each time, so I hope that makes sense. Have a go at the activity sheets, ask for help if you need it. And I do hope this video is helpful. You can pause it at any point, you can rewind it if you need to just to look back at certain things. But it certainly will help you with filling out the activity sheets. So just remember to ask for help and try your best.